Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Now that we've got the cringe out of the way for this video's worth, we are going to take a look at something that my boy Dylan Burger, Burger Dylan, the Burger King burglar, the, the McDonald's burglar. <laughs> um, you get it? The, the burglar. Never mind. Posted two days ago on implying we can discuss the mathematics uh, and Twitter, and I found it look quite interesting because this boy right here is uh, looking like Soflo Pro Stream, my most viewed video. Okay, this right here is Soflo Pro Stream Reloaded, but in a really nice way. Okay, now. The first observation, this goes from negative infinity to infinity, this integral, this absolutely beautiful individual known on my channel as Dirichlet integral. We have evaluated this boy from zero to infinity already. It's going to evaluate pi over two, but I want you guys to know something, okay? This is an even integral, so if plug negative x and t, it's going to result in the same integral, meaning if we have an even integrand over symmetric integrals, just two times the integral from zero to infinity in this case. Two times pi over two is going to be a to just pi. And this is our mission for today. We want to show that this sum right here is indeed equal to our boy, our irrational transcendental boy, our transgender boy, pi. Okay? And I have to admit, I don't know about any way to manipulate this integral into this summation right here, this, this double infinity boy, okay, goes from negative infinity to infinity. I don't know how to do this. That's why we are just going to take a look at the value of this thing and we are going to see, ooh, they are indeed equal. This does the trick. Let us go ahead and get started. And this goes from negative to infinity, from negative infinity to infinity. Don't be speech retarded r right here, Papa Flemmy, okay? Please speak a good English, just like Pudai Pai. It's kind of the same situation right here that we have with our integral. If you have an even summoned, in this case, over symmetric interval, this is going to result in kind of two times the summation from one to infinity. But we have one odd boy out. The odd ones out on this thing right here is the term where k approaches zero. This is our little troublemaker. We are going to talk about this in a second. At first, let us see that we have an even summon over a symmetric um, interval. Meaning, like I said, we are going to have the weird part, the limit, as um, in this case k approaches zero of sine of k over k, and then plus two times well, this thing from uh, 1 to infinity, so k being greater or equal to 1, um, of sine of k over k. Now with that out of the way, we can take a look at this thing right here at first, because it's not too hard. If we take a look at the Taylor series expansion of our sign, I know that is a well-known limit, go fuck yourself, seriously. I have not derived it on this channel yet. I think. So, I'm going to derive it here, really quick. Our Taylor series expansion for sine tells us that we have um, our polynomial of the form, well, odd parts. So, k plus o of k to the third power over k. Meaning, if we break this up to k over k, this is just one, that's a constant, so limit of a constant is just a constant itself. So, this is one plus the limit as k over to zero of O k squared, so all the terms with order 2 or higher, with de degree 2 or higher. Okay, meaning if we let those go to 0, they are just going to vanish in the process. Meaning this limit overall is going to value a to 1. So this is just 1 plus this chunk. With that out of the way, this right here is a famous limit. I know you watch Black Pen, Red Pen, you are smart, I really don't give a shit. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and deal with this thing right here. And there are actually two ways. The, the first one I did using the kind of nonlinear dynamics chaos theory way to actually take a look at the sign as being nothing but the imaginary part of the complex exponential function, but that's going to result in something not too nice, and not too nice logarithm. That's why we are going to take a look at this thing just in terms of its 
Euler definition. Okay, e to the i times k minus e to the negative i times k over 2 times i. 1 over 2 times i is just a constant, we can bring it to the outside. Okay, I hope you can follow me on this. So we have 1 plus 2 over 2 times i. Okay, this is what I was talking about. And then we have this infinity boy, k being greater or equal to 1 of, okay, thus we have e to the i times k minus e to the negative i times k over k. 2 and 1 half is going to cancel out. 1 over i is nothing but with i over i, we can expand this fraction, so negative i, meaning this is going to result in 1 minus i times our infinity boy. 1 over k e to the i times k minus e to the negative i times k. We are going to do some manipulations. Are we going to do some manipulations? I think we are going to do so. Because why the hell not? Or we can just break this infinity... Yeah, let us break this infinity boy up. I was thinking why not just factor out something here and yeah, uh, not so good would be that we would have the harmonic series right here. So one part wouldn't really converge. So let us break this up under the condition that this limit actually exists. It's probably pi right here, okay? We are just going to say that this thing converges absolutely in its radius of convergence, okay? That's basically just form the Taylor series. We can break this up into two series, meaning we have one minus i times our infinity ball of e to the i times k over k minus yet another infinity ball, k being greater or equal to one, of e to the negative i times k over k. Now I want you guys to take a look at something completely different, kind of completely different. Okay, if we have e to the a times b power, okay, e to b power, then this is e to the a to the b power. Okay, that's something we can do. So let us bring the k to the outside, kind of. I hope you could follow me on that. And now we are going to have an infinity boy from 1 to infinity of something to the k's power over k. This kind of reminds me at least of something, okay? We have talked about this before, we have derived it before, and I have said it before. You are going to end up with a weird logarithm if you do it the chaos theory kind of way. Our boy, the natural log of 1 plus x, okay? This right here can be turned into a formal Taylor series expansion under the condition that's in its radius of convergence. We don't care at the moment, okay? It's, it's an imaginary argument that we are going to have right here. Yeah, maybe it converges, maybe not. It, it, it does converge, so never mind. So the absolute value of this thing is, is one, okay? So natural log of two converges, blah, blah, blah. Now, the formal Taylor series of this thing is k being greater or equal to one of negative one to the k plus one power should be, yeah, to, to the k plus one power and then x to the k power over k. Okay, I hope you can see where this comes from. Uh, if you don't know that, take a look into the description. There will be a link to the corresponding video as always. Now, negative one to the k plus one power, we don't really have that right here, so, so that's weird. What's the reason for that? Well, it's just a positive sign on here, so why not change the positive sign? to a negative sign. So we are going to do the transformation x goes to negative x, basically. Now, meaning the natural log of 1 minus x is going to be the summation from 1 to infinity of, okay, x to the k power is going to be preserved, but with a negative 1 to the k power. Negative 1 to the k power times this chunk is negative 1 to the 2 k power, negative 1 to any even power is just positive 1 times negative 1. So we are going to have negative Taylor series of x to the k power over k. Let me put it like this. Now, if we just identify our x to be e to the i power, that's why I've written it that way. Well, we are really good to go, okay? Just simply because e to the i is thus our x, meaning this thing is going to vega a2. I'm going to bring the negative sign to here. So negative natural log of one minus e to the i, and the other one is, okay, negative sign is going to be preserved this time, okay, that's just how our um, thing should look like. So, positive, then logarithmus naturalis, natural log of 1 minus e to the negative i. 
this has already been kind of some work, okay? It's, it's not too much work, but it is something. Now, let me think for a second. We can actually do a bit better. So, if you remember the function equation and the real and complex numbers, or only the, the real numbers, I don't want to talk about too much complex numbers right here. Okay, okay. We have that natural log of a times b is the natural log of a plus the natural log of b. This is something that we have. It would be pretty dope to actually eliminate those complex natural logs right here. And, and we can actually do that. Why not factor out e to the negative i on this one right here? Okay, if we factor out the e to the negative i on our natural log, we are going to have, okay, 1 minus i times, I'm going to put it like this, negative natural log of 1 minus e to the i, but also, like I said, we are going to factor out e to the negative i, giving us e to the i right here and the 1 right here. So, plus the natural log of um, e to the negative i times e to the i minus 1. Now, you see, now we have a product of things right here and I have to close my brackets off. That, that kind of triggered me right now. We have the situation that I was talking about. Natural log of a plus the natural log of b, but we want to eliminate this and those two don't have the same argument at the moment. How can we get to the same argument? Well, by factoring out the negative one, okay? By factoring out negative one, we're going to have what you want. Now, we can break this up into the natural log of negative e to the negative i plus the natural log of 1 minus e to the i. It's just simple algebra right here. It's really easy. This and that is going to cancel out in the process, meaning we are going to be left with 1 minus i times the natural log of negative 1 times e to the negative i, just the same situation as before. Let's do another iteration, leaving us with the natural log of negative 1 plus the natural log of e to the negative i. Can you see why, why this is really good? Ah, this is pretty good, okay? <laughs> the natural log of e to the something is just the something itself. Those two are inverses from each other. And we are going to take a look at just the principal branch right now, okay? Let us consider just the principal branch of our sign right here. Meaning more formally, we would write that we are going to take a look at the principal logarithm, okay? This is just a little nitpicky thing that most physicists, for example, don't give a shit about. Burger Dylan probably doesn't give a shit about the principal branch right here. I don't know. This thing right here is going to evaluate to negative i. Now, Logarithm principal log of negative 1. What is that? Well, we're just going to take a look at complex number. Okay, negative 1 is right here. Meaning what we basically do to get to negative 1 is we are going to do a pi rotation clockwise or counterclockwise. It really doesn't quite matter. But principal branch meaning we are not going to go around further and further and further. Meaning this rotation is going to correspond with a radius of 1 to e to the i times pi. And yeah, we can plug this in. Negative 1 is e to the i times pi. Meaning overall, this is going to give us 1 minus i times logarithm of e to the something is just something itself, i times pi minus i. Now we can go ahead and distribute stuff into everything going to leave us with 1 minus i times i times pi. It's going to give us, okay, i times i is negative 1, so giving us positive pi. Negative 1, negative 1 is positive 1, but i times i is negative 1. This and that is going to cancel out, and we are going to have our pi. That we were seeking, this is the i, now this is not the i, this is the i without the pi, so the, without the p pi. <laughs> We wanted pi, we got pi, okay? This is the point of my sentence, my, my non-existent sentence right here. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, like, comment, channel, like, Burger Dylan, thank you for sending this problem. You didn't really send this problem to me, but I stole it from your Twitter and Facebook page.
If you want to support Chen a bit more, buy those awesome t-shirts I created. Avoid positivity, my sons and daughters, stay negative, or support Chen on Patreon. No matter what you do, I think us watching I'm the next video. Have a flamboyant day. See ya. <laughs> ciao. Ciao. Many people enjoyed it. Ciao.